one mentioned fixing unemployment. Now, what basically are the people expecting from the new government? Expectations are high. Um, unemployment, just like in other African countries, is very high. And another thing that I would say is going to implement policies, uh, as you might have heard, that one district, one factory. That is the means of creating jobs for the unemployed. Now, on the other, the ruling party presidential candidate, Trump President, John Draman Mahama, said that he is going to uh, implement press policy that will see the economy boosted and to create jobs for the youth. It remains to be seen who is going to be the lead by the market who goes to the to choose their next question. VOA is Peter Clotty. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Well, Nigeria's president has again given the assurance that the end is in sight for Boko Haram insurgency in Nigeria. President Mohamed Buhari said this in Senegal, where he is attending the third Dakar International Forum on Peace and Security in Africa. The president, who attributed the success in the fight against the militants to the increased cooperation between Nigeria and its neighbors, also noted that the security situation in Nigeria has improved significantly. Addressing a panel of heads of state at the summit, he says, quote, We are now operating in the Sambisa forest, and as far as Boko Haram is concerned in the Lake Chad Basin area, I think they are done for. The president's comment is contained in a statement by his spokesman, Mr. Gabba Shehu, in which he emphasizes that Nigeria is capable of surmounting its security challenges. Over now to the Gambia, where a high court has released 12 political prisoners on bail. This action has raised hopes that this is the end of repression in the country after authoritarian ruler Yaya Jame was defeated in presidential elections last week by property developer Adama Barrow. The 12 political prisoners had been arrested for taking part in an unlawful assembly in May. Meanwhile, a leading member of the coalition which defeated President Yaya Jamet says that the outgoing president will be prosecuted for alleged crimes committed during his rule. This comes as the head of the Gambia's army, General Usman Baji, pledged allegiance to President-elect Adama Barrow in a key sign of support for him. The Prime Minister of Cameroon, Philemon Yang, says the country's constitution provides for a unitary state which must never be divided. Mr. Yang's comment dismisses the notion of federal state as the answer to this content of English speakers in the northern part of the country. Since November 21, life has been disrupted at universities and schools in the Anglophone regions of Cameroon, where English speakers say they are discriminated against. Lawyers also protested against the requirement that they use French in court proceedings. There's been a lull in the protest movement as the government has pledged to look into the demands which have articulated by the protesters. The National Assembly's Health and Appropriation Committees have concluded a three-day retreat at Ways to Improve Nigeria's Health Sector. Also present at the retreat at the Pan-African Parliament in Johannesburg, South Africa, were lawmakers from Swaziland and Zimbabwe who shared their country's experiences with them. They promise to do more to push the executive to ensure budgets passed for all sectors are implemented for the benefit of the people. The lawmakers' primary focus was how to improve Nigeria's health sector. Interprofessional rivalry in the health sector. It goes from primary health facilities, secondary health facilities, and tertiary health facilities. Build a cottage hospital in every local government. Yes. Well equipped. Yes. We say about between 30 to 60 beds. Yes. Now, in every senatorial zone, you have a hospital. reference hospital. Yes. Well equipped. Yes, Thank God we are having a summit very soon. And uh, in Nigeria, I think most of these things should uh, be in the forefront. They not only listened to one another, but also heard the country experiences from their counterparts from Swaziland and Zimbabwe. You can make thousands of loads. But if they are not implemented, you are just, just doing nothing. If you cannot Experts in budget research were also on hand to present their findings regarding budgetary performance or the lack of it in Nigeria. Instead of allocating more money to health in blankets, let us focus on capital expenditures. 
because that is exactly what translates to um, what people get. Then quarterly budget releases and implementation report. How can we be deliberating a new budget if we have not seen the report of what has been invented in the past? The last thing I would recommend is uh, access to the health, health uh, ministry or district. But a lot of things have been identified. What exactly are we doing <coughs> concerning those um, um, issues? The Everyone blames implementation for a lack of performance, but budget implementation will obviously not implement itself. Everything begins and falls on leadership. We have resolved that this 2017 we must enforce its implementation because once it's law, it's law. You cannot select which law to obey or which law not to obey. And this, like we've said, health is wealth. It affects uh, Nigeria as a whole. Well, we have uh, at least come to the conclusion that the success of health in any country is a function of dedicated funding and also dedicated personnel. Of course, the dedicated personnel too is also the result of proper funding, of personnel cost. In Nigeria, 2016, we failed in both aspects. Hopefully the retreat resolutions will make a difference for the better, in this case, in Nigeria's health sector. From Midran, Johannesburg, Betsy Debia, Channels Television News. Time, the UK's Chancellor of the Exchequer, Philip Hammond, is in South Africa in a bit to try to cement deeper trade ties. Mr. Hammond is in South Africa to reassure the country that despite the UK's departure from the European Union, the UK will continue to forge stronger links with its non-European trading partners, especially in the finance sector. There are fears that existing EU agreements which give British exporters privileged access to South African markets could be under threat. Coming up on Network Africa, UN envoy calls for reconciliation and humanitarian aid in Yemen, South Sudan. Join us again.